Hello and welcome to this series of short, let's say episodes on how to introduce the Big Leash Remote Trainer. I often wonder whether remote trainer is the right word. I like to think of it as a, a training tool, certainly, but it, it's, it's something which doesn't train by itself. It's something that we use to help us train. And that's the important thing to realize throughout this series. We are trainers. We use it to help us. We use it to create attention from the dog, to bring the dog's focus to us. We use it to distract him from things. We use it to prompt him. We use it to reinforce a command. Yes, we can use it to correct, but that is a rarity. You do the training well and you use this communication correctly, then corrections are very few, if any. So. The aim of this trainer really is to build a communication between you so that you can work him off leash as well as on leash. Uh, and Dog Watch Big Leash has been developing this particular product for a few years to one which I really enjoy working with for a number of reasons. The first is it's lovely and small. The unit that goes on the dog itself is very small, very light, doesn't seem to be obtrusive at all. The second reason is that it looks like a telephone and like all people you get used to using your thumbs it becomes very very easy to use. The dog watch you can send it up for two dogs if you wish. I tend to just use it for one dog and it has the ability to use continuous stimulation, momentary stimulation, vibration, a tone. It has a, a, a couple of other nice little features as well which I'll show you in a second. Uh, one is that you can switch a light on at night. I wonder where my dog is. I've got black labs. They're out at night. I wonder where they are. Press the button. Oh, there they are. The light is flashing. So that's rather nice. And the other thing is, let's say your dog goes out of sight. When you press the button, on the screen that you see there, this little LCD screen, there is an image which shows you the strength of the signal. And it gives you something like about, I think it's about like six stripes, six steps on there. When it's on full, it means the dog is close to you. The less stripes you get, the further the dog is away from you. So although this one will go up to half a mile, if your dog is, let's say, a quarter of a mile away, not all the stripes will show up. And it's about time you started calling him back. So it's rather nice to be able to say that particular feature on it. So waterproof as well showerproof, but that is definitely waterproof, can go swimming. Okay, so we've got a very nice little big leash unit. Comes in a very nice pack, comes with instructions, comes with rechargeable units, a little dual connector, clicks in, put in. You've got a port on this one here at the bottom, you just put your connector in there, a port on this one, leave it overnight, in fact leave it for two and a half, three hours and it charges up, charges up very quickly. I put them on every night, just like my telephone. I put them on every night because I don't want to forget and all of a sudden I'm out there and I've got no power in my unit. That's very, very important. Comes with a lanyard if you want it, but the nice little thing as well about it is that I like, it comes with the ability to change the points. These points here, I can make them long ones for if I've got a Labrador or a German Shepherd with long coat or I've got a short coated dog. The other thing which I like about this unit is that you've got these little acorns, I'm going to call them at the end, these little electrodes at the end, which are limited in size. Some units that you purchase these days are all metal and I find that where the amount of metal touches the skin, the sensation is different towards the dog that feeling towards the dog is different. This one here, the surface area varies very, very little. It can't vary much. And therefore, the, uh, let's say the, 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 sens the, the sensation doesn't change all that much by the collar moving, 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 the dog knocking it, whatever it is. Okay, so it's, a, it's, it, 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 it's more reliable. I feel more comfortable. I feel more confident with it. That's the important thing. Okay. So now let's look at a unit and how it works, because this is the important thing. A lot of people are very afraid that when you actually send a sensation, a stimulation, and it is electricity, 
It's electricity which creates the sensation. The dog doesn't know what electricity is. He's never put his paw in a plug. He's never learned what electricity is from uh, putting his tongue on a battery, something like that. So he's not concerned about it. Him, it's just a different sensation. When we feel it, we're often thinking it's going to kind of go through our whole bodies. Actually, it doesn't. It just goes between electrodes. So this muscle here, or this nerve centers that go through here, are touched by the electricity going between those two poles there. What happens is it contracts that and lets it go, contracts that and lets it go. In other words, it creates a sensation. Some people will say to me, oh, it's like a tickle. Some people will say it feels like tapping. Some people will say it feels a little bit like electricity, but it's nothing to worry about. And what we're always doing when we're starting with our dogs is to find the level at which the dog says, oh, yes, that's a, I feel a tapping. I feel a tickle. I feel a, oh, is that a flea? something which is not going to worry them, but they can sense. So yes, there is a current running between these two points here, which creates a reaction in your skin, which creates a sensation to the dog. The same way as we might do a leash, the same way as we might just tapping with my finger, the same way as we might stroking sometimes. It's creating a sensation and what we do then is to put a command to that sensation or we put an action to that sensation or it becomes part of a communication which the dog begins to understand being within his training. It's as straightforward as that. And at one time they used to call them correction collars. Some people still do. I don't see this as a correction collar anymore. I see this as a, a training and let's get go and have fun collar. This is one where when you put it on the dog, he says, oh great, we're going out to play, we're going out to train, we're going out to really have fun. And it becomes his necklace, it becomes his training necklace. And so, you know, when we're talking about corrections, yes, it can be used as a correction, but that is a very, very small percentage of the time we might be using it. And sometimes we never use it that way. We're using it in a way which helps the dog to do what we require. It's a training collar. Okay, this one's a, a little bit different than some units. It hasn't got switches as such where you can just press. It has a way here. There are two little triangles, one little triangle, two little triangles, one little triangle. You put them together. You hear a beep and it's switched on. Okay. On this unit here at the front, if I show you, if I can, you have up button down button. I can send the stimulation level up. I can bring the stimulation level down. I can give B, which is brief or momentary, press it, and just for a split second it will send a sensation. Just that split second. This one here is continuous. Press it and it stays down, it stays on as long as I hold it. But let go of it, it stops. So I can go sit, one little pop, sit or leave it, leave it, let it off. I like the continuous button because it gives me more versatility. The A button, uh, why say it's called actuate, in that you can either have a tone or you can have a vibration. And I can change this button to be either tone or vibration, whichever I wish. Personally, I prefer the vibration. And the reason is that I find sometimes when a dog is stuck on a sniff, I can press the vibration. He says, what's that? Without being a strong aversive in any way, just catches his attention. And I can stay on the same level for the sensation, for the stimulation, and then carry on working with them again. And when I press the vibration on this one here, not only does it vibrate, but if I put it next to my ear, it's a and I hear the noise more than I feel the vibration. In fact, this is one of the things that you want to think about when you're actually using the collar to train. What part of the dog's senses is taking priority? If you've got a dog where his nose is taken over, then he won't feel the stimulation. You may have to go up. If you've got a dog who his eyes has seen something in the distance, there's a squirrel, you might find that you've got to change the stimulation level. But what I like to do is to catch their attention with a vibration, stay on the same level, and then tap them. So 
when you're looking at what the dog is doing, find out where his brain is. And don't feel that he's ignoring you. It might be that one of his senses has taken over and actually his brain is on his nose or his brain is in his eyes or his brain is in his ears and not in his skin sensation where this is coming through. Okay, so there's a lot of things to think about. So we have a little unit here, we've switched it on. We've got up levels, we've got down levels, we've got continuous, we've got momentary, and we've got actuate, which in my case here is vibration, but you can make it tone, as I say, if you wish that. The other thing is that we can tune it into two collars, so you can tune two dogs. My problem is that I'm not clever enough to use one unit for two dogs. I tend to go out and have one big leash in one hand and one big leash in the other hand, and I know that is for Sammy, and I know this one is for Freckles, okay? And, and, and I use it that way, but some people are very adept and can use, so it's there. But one of the things I do like is this. As I say, if you want to see something rather fun, go out at night and just press, and your dog is seen where he is. He's up there, he's in the bushes, he's in the corner, I've lost him, I don't know where he is. You press that, you can see where he is. You don't have to panic. It's a very, very nice little feature. Now, myself, I'm quite happy to hold the collar and say, is it working? One, can't feel it. Two, can't feel it. Three, can't feel it. Four, can't feel it. Five, ah, now I'm feeling a five. And to me, on a continuous, a five is just tap, 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 tap. But if you have a little look, it's nothing. What, what is interesting is to me, I can feel it, but what she's doing, can you see what it's doing to my skin? That's not painful. Let me go up to a seven. Pop, pop. Now you might see it a little more. You see it moving? And that's sometimes you might see that on your dog's neck. You press it, it goes like that. And when we first using the collar, when we're first introducing to the collar, sometimes we see that. The dog, the neck will just move. His ears will go to one side. His eyes will just blink. His neck will pull around and they'll go, what's that? And for me there, I can't help that muscle moving. The nerve and the muscle is moving involuntary. So really, it's like someone tapping me on the shoulder and saying, Martin, listen to me. Hey, come over here. And we're tapping, tapping. Tapping, tapping, just to get attention, okay? So when you see things light on that, like that on your dog, it doesn't mean that it's creating a problem. What it means is that the dog is feeling it, or the muscles are, and the sensation is there. And now what we've got to do is teach the dog what that sensation actually means. Okay. So when we put this on the dog, I always put the collar to one side or I put it in my pocket, okay? I like the dog to be as calm as possible. I like the dog to be in as distraction-free an area as possible. But you know what? Very few of us have that opportunity. So we put it on the dog and we go out and we look for opportunities with the dog where he's a little calmer maybe, where he's not sniffing, where he's just walking around, maybe where he looks at us, and we can try the levels and go up in levels and see how it works. See whether it touches him, see whether it feels him. Because the level we want to find is the one that he just feels.